the center primarily focuses on supporting the homeless in downtown Durban. It has programs that focus on health care, homeless support, and skills development. Read their stories here she smiles and jokes with her colleagues at Dennis Hurley Center, an interfaith charity in the heart of Durban's sprawling CBD, as she prepares meals for many homeless and needy people who line up for hot meals each day. I wasn't always this happy, 59-year-old Tracy Bolt tells News24, remembering the hardships she and her siblings endured in her youth. The earliest childhood memory he has is his family living under a bridge in the industrial suburb of Clarewood, South Durban. I have three other siblings, two sisters and a brother. My mother raised all four of us on the streets, she says. I must have been seven to eight years old when you left us. Then we were taken to children's homes. The mother of four was abandoned at an early stage in and her life was filled with traumas until she decided to change and live positively. My sisters were taken to St. Monica's home in Durban. My brother and I were taken to another institution, she recalls. But that she and her brother ran away, she. We went to a police station and told them we were abused at a children's home. I was then transferred to the industrial school in Wellington, Cape Town, she says. Bolt lived in school until he was 18 years old. She had to leave, although she only attended school until the seventh grade because she started late. At that stage, another family adopted him. She says I had to cook, clean and take care of the young children. She feels incredibly homesick and lonely, she decided to return to Durban search for her family. The first person I found was my cousin who helped me call my mom, she adds. After searching for weeks, they found her mother at King George Hospital in Durban. I visited my mother at the hospital and asked why she had left us. She opened her mouth and tried to speak, but she couldn't say anything. She gestured as if to say something, but not a word came out of her mouth, Bolt recalls. Not long after, his mother. He before we could explain why he didn't look at us when we were little. Sometimes I needed know why he left us on the streets to fend for ourselves or sit in a corner and watch him drink. Growing up on the streets made me anxious and easily intimidated. I still struggle to socialize with people. Living under the Claywood Bridge was tough, but that wasn't the end of his struggles. Around age 21, Bolt conceived his first child, a son. When my son was two years old, I was diagnosed with TB and had to be hospitalized, he says. Her boyfriend was killed while she was in the hospital. I lived with him and his family, she adds. I was discharged from hospital the day of funeral. After he was buried, my boyfriend's mother fired me. She said that while I was raising my child, I should go out and look for another man. Bolt returned to the streets, where he mingled with the wrong crowd and began using drugs. There, he also became involved in romantic relationships that resulted in the birth of three more children. My first daughter's father was also killed. My second daughter's father of tuberculosis and my last son's father is gone. I haven't seen him since 2008, she says. His last three children were born on the streets of Durban. Her life was effectively similar to her mother's, using drugs, drinking alcohol regularly, begging, and seeing her children grow up without a father. He says his youngest son, now 22, also uses drugs, but quit after threatening to cut ties with him. Life starts to change during this time, he began to think about changing his life. He didn't want the youngest to grow up like him. After meals were served, I would wander around the cathedral and beg volunteers give me something to do, my annoyance, she says. Eventually, a religious institution hired him to work in his kitchen, where he was paid a salary. I was able to use that money to pay for a place at a shelter, Bolt says. Unfortunately, the shelter was turned into a student dormitory and we were kicked out. She currently lives in Durban with her son but wants to find her own home someday. Right now my life isn't perfect. 
But every day I wake up and cook for the homeless. I cook with passion. I'm much happier. I don't do drugs anymore. I work with people who are my family. My kids are all independent and I have a good relationship with them, she adds. Dennis Hulley Center The Dennis Hulley Center officially opened in 2015, but its history dates back to 1901, when the site on which it is located was first purchased for religious and humanitarian activities. Bolt is one of hundreds of people who benefit from his relationship with the center. Bulalo Sigabi, a 48-year-old entrepreneur who lost his delivery job in 2020, also had a hard time and became homeless during the COVID-19 outbreak. A philanthropist introduced him the center and he trained to start book retail business before sponsoring him a table, chair, and the first batch of books be sold. Its stop is located at Davenport Square in Glenwood, Durban. David Van Westhuizen, 43, a former inmate who received assistance similar to that provided to Sigabi, says the bookstore is at the popular KZNSA Gallery in Glenwood, Durban. According to the center's website, the center's focus is care, education and society. The center has a variety of programs that focus on health care, support for the homeless, and skills development.